Hello and welcome to another video. Today, I take you to a time to which I don't often venture, the late Victorian era. Join me as I amble about in my mid-1880s day dress, a garment simply perfect for enjoying a crisp fall day. Together, we'll discover the many weird and wonderful trappings that give such garments their distinctive silhouettes. So without further ado, let's get started. First up, some historical underwear. Many options were possible, but here I am wearing stockings, a chemise or shift which is edged in lace and ribbon and closed with a button, and a pair of drawers done up with a drawstring. The drawers are split, meaning that they have an opening at the inseam, as by this point in history drawers were a staple of the feminine wardrobe. Next up, the corset. This corset closes at the front with a spoon busk and laces at the back with metal eyelets. Corsets of the period were made of all sorts of fabrics and usually embellished quite prettily. Mine is made of silk taffeta, and as was common for the period, it is stiffened with both steel boning and cording, and the bones are held in place with flossing. This corset gives bust and back support, as well as lending an hourglass silhouette to the wearer. Considerable waist reductions are possible with this style, and some ladies did opt for extreme lacing. However, this was by no means the norm. If you want to learn more about this corset, I made a video about its construction. The link is down below. Up next, the skirt support. Skirt supports changed dramatically across the years, even from year to year, as changes in fashion accelerated. Here, I have a lobster tail to remove, which was one of the most common types of bustle for the decade. As you can see, it's made of hoops and tied with tapes, allowing for it to collapse easily. It also swishes and sways with movement, which never ceases to entertain me. After this comes a petticoat. The petticoat helps smooth and hide the bustle's hoops, as well as adding a little more volume to the look, which is of course exactly what this outfit needs. Many ladies would also opt to add a corset cover here, but since it's not essential and I find it too bulky and warm, I opted not to. And here comes the foundation skirt. Pleats and darts allow for it to fit both the wearer and bustle, which is no small feat, and the skirt fastens at the side with a hook and eye. You can see my skirt is made of vivid green silk du peony. Vivid colours were possible in the latter half of the 19th century thanks to the introduction of aniline dyes, and the Victorians were not averse to using slubbier silks like du peony, so I took advantage of both of these factors to use a lovely textural fabric to create a reptilian aesthetic. Now we begin with the overskirt draperies. Pleats, gathers, and darts all helped to give shape and volume to these, as did tapes that allowed the overall shape to be changed from wear to wear. Here you can see me wearing the drapery with the tapes loose, and then with the tapes tied, just to show how much the garment can change with the use of tapes. Of course, the Victorians did nothing in half measures, so I added another overskirt drapery, itself made of six distinct pieces. As you can see, this one is made primarily of black silk chantung and is accented with beads. Overskirt draperies could be made of matching or contrasting fabrics and were often very heavily trimmed. With draperies on, the bodice can be added. Bodices of this era were tight-fitting, necessitating the use of darts to allow for the smoothest possible fit over a corset. My bodice is what is known as a day bodice, meaning that it was to be worn during the daytime and not for formal evening functions. My bodice fastens with hooks and eyes over a plastron front, and it's actually all one piece, even though when done up it gives the illusion of multiple layers. Kinda cool, right? And that's it! As you can see, the silhouette produced is quite dramatic, thanks largely to the cinched waist and the voluminous bustle. It's also quite warm. I do actually find it oppressive in the summer, but on this fall day I was toasty warm and quite content. So why not head off to the local park to enjoy a walk? Just don't tell anyone this lady went out without her hat. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Supporting me by liking this video or checking out my channel is always appreciated. And if there's a time period you'd like to see me try my hand at, just drop me a comment. But until then, take care, and I'll see you next time.